Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, another video. Welcome back. A lot of good praise, a lot of uh, nice words from y'all on the past training vlog voiceover. So, uh, do me a favor, comment below if you want to see kind of a weekly recap of my training weekly. I know that sounds redundant, but what we do is take the whole week uh, and throw it into one video, whether it be voiceover or more daily vlog style, uh, and share that at least on, on once every single week. I, I, I just never think about posting it because my lifts aren't that cool, I ain't that strong, um, but I'm out here working, I'm out here making progress, and maybe I can teach you a little something or at least share the journey along the way. Seems like we've been enjoying a little bit of the teaching style videos, but we're gonna mix it up today. We got a Q and A. I've been doing every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Instagram. Um, kind of a fitness one Monday in life, uh, business, etc. Wednesday, Friday, personal. So if you wanna get involved, head over there. Uh, but today we're gonna to bang out some questions I did not answer on Instagram. We're gonna bang them out here, I appreciate you. Stay tuned, next Monday, like six days, the 15th, Third Street Barbell, brand new good company apparel dropping. Uh, I probably have previews on my Instagram again, or Third Street Barbell Instagram. Let's hop into the video. How many exercises for a full body? And how many is too much? Um, so we can't exactly say how many exercises is too much, but a very good starting point, um, it depends on your frequency. So if you're training every other day, or let's say four times a week, and you choose to go a full body style, um, which is a great idea, Eric Helms is making it very popular, and power lifters typically do it just because some of their lifts overlap. It's something that I've done for years now. Uh, I've mixed my compounds, thrown in some accessories, and done them multiple times a week. What I would start with is anywhere from two to three compounds, right? Maybe some kind of leg, some kind of push, some kind of pull. And then I would finish out with two to four accessories. Simple, simple. Doesn't mean you have to do an arm blaster, run the rack, drop set, mega set, like everyone on TikTok and Instagram is telling you to do every single day. But you could do one really good back movement, like a close grip chin. And you could do one really good curl movement, like maybe a preacher curl. There you go, back and by is done for the day. It's that simple. Because if you're gonna be training them four times a week, having six good working sets a day is plenty. If you're getting your proximity to failure for hypertrophy, if you're working on that progressively overloading and the skill of the strength for the main compounds, the chin up or the squat or whatever it might be. Um, another thing is that if you're doing it four times a week, you might wanna choose two different workouts and kinda go A, B, A, B. That's a really good option. So uh, day one could be squats, bench, and chin-ups. Day two then would be uh, deadlifts, overhead press, and bent over rows. So you're both getting the hinge, you're getting the squat, you're getting the vertical and horizontal push and pull. It's not that complicated. And then with rep schemes, you can vary them. Uh, A1 could be lower, B1 could be lower, so ones, ones to fives. A2, B2 could be threes to eights. Same with the accessories, right? We're going four to tens and then we're going eight to twelves. Boom, bada bing. How much is too much? Probably no such thing. If you're not working out at all and you all of a sudden try to do a thousand different exercises, yeah, you'll probably regress or get injured or just not make the progress you want. So slowly ramp up the volume, slowly ramp up the frequency and slowly ramp up the weight. Call me the full body king. I, I'm once known as your peach king but I'm also your full body kink. Do you do any mobility exercises before you lift? Absolutely friggin' not. I fuggin' hate mobility. Now, before all of you start to point out your favorite PT on Instagram that shows you this wibble wobble, left, right, up, down, kettlebell exercise that you have to do if you wanna be able to touch your toes long term or your favorite yogi, I just don't care. Uh, from anecdotal evidence and even from some more practical evidence, I don't think that stretching or the typical mobility when you're talking about foam rollers and bands uh, is necessary for the majority of lifters. I think what is highly, highly underutilized, highly, highly underrated is simply warming up and moving. We need to move our bodies more. If you get blood into your muscles, into your joints, from general to specific, meaning I'm walking, I'm biking, I'm uh, lunging, I'm doing very general warm-ups all the way to specific, where I'm doing the barbell for the movement I'm doing for higher reps, we're gonna be in our best place to get in position. 
most often than not, and I saw someone post about it recently, but most often than not, both again, anecdotal from coaching thousands of people over the last 12 years and talking to some very high level professionals over the last 12 years, if you have bad positioning in any lift, chances are it's likely not your mobility, it's likely just motor pattern and you're not getting used to that position, right? So like the bottom of the squat. Some people may have mobility, but chances are it's just a motor pattern on how to get down there and how to control it down there. Um, I think that mobility has its time and place. I think warming up will get you much, much further. And working with not only athletes, power lifters, gen pop for the last 12 years, it's very rarely that I've seen someone go from not flexible to highly flexible in the long term. You can make very acute changes in your mobility or your flexibility by doing some stretching. Um, but for the majority of folks, I just don't think it's worth the effort. If you like to come in and lay down on a foam roller for an hour before you start lifting, who am I to tell you not? Because someone, I've said some stuff like this in the past, and like, placebo is a hell of a thing. Yeah, then placebo your dumb ass from not doing it and go lift weights. I like to spend my time better. I like to utilize my time more efficiently. I'm not a huge fan. There's my controversial statement. Everyone on YouTube always throws these controversial statement about this guy, that guy, this method, this trainer, this supplement. I walk the middle of the road because I like to con continue to critically think, learn from other people and pick up something I can. I typically don't take a black and white statement and that's probably why the popularity of me and everything I do is probably not that great, but there's your friggin' thing. F fuck you and fuck your mobility. <laughs> Favorite pre-workout snack? Now to start what's could be a long rant, but doesn't need to be. Um, I used to be very particular about how I got ready for uh, lifting. Um, shout out to my high school basketball coach, Dean Stark. I learned a lot of really good things about building routine from him, which I've preached to you guys about the lift itself. But maybe I got a little too caught up in training. And so I would try to set up everything perfectly to have the best training day every single day. Um, and some of you might think that's cool, that that's like professional, that's something you need. But the difference is you only play like 30 basketball games a year uh, when you're playing in high school or college. So setting up 30 days over a six month span isn't that hard. You can do it. You can get your mind right. You can get your body right. You can get your routine, your food, your sleep, how you pack your bag, how you put on your shoes, all that stuff. When you start to train five days a week, four to seven days a week for 12 years, getting that perfect routine is nearly impossible as lifting weights does not pay my bills. It does not pay anyone's bills really. So, you know, Talking about the pre-workout snack, I used to love waking up, getting my whole routine. I'd have a Chipotle burrito about two and a half hours before training. I'd take a shower to kind of wake up. I love taking a shower before I move or get athletic um, and, and progress into my workout. But as opening different companies, as I've been traveling more over the last five years, uh, as meetings build up, as podcasts build up, content, we have content here, Instagram, podcast, Twitch, TikTok, I have five different platforms that I'm posting on regularly. My ability to build that perfect routine and have the perfect pre-workout snack and have my meal ready two hours before I gotta go train, it's just not there anymore. So I kinda had to shatter my idea of that um, and not be so soft, I guess, for lack of a better term, is that I had to make sure I had a good workout no matter what. Empty stomach, full stomach, too much water, not enough water, good weather, bad weather, I'm tired, I'm not tired. How do I get the work in and focus in on that work? And so yeah, I guess long story short, it used to be like a Chipotle burrito two and a half hours before. Now, as long as I get some kind of caffeine about an hour before, I'm pretty happy and I feel pretty good. Um, and then I just take a little bit longer to warm up. Again, fug in your mobility. Fug in, that's F-U-G-G-I-N for those that don't know we don't curse no more. Um, I appreciate you. Quick Q&A. Uh, if you guys want to get involved on TikTok, uh, I, I have both names, Silent Mike with 1K and Silent Mike with 2Ks. One's my gaming channel, one is my fitness one, and we're doing technique reviews. So if you follow me there, post a nice long video, tag me, I'll try to duet a video with you uh, and give you some free coaching on there. Um, I do appreciate you guys. Brand new videos all the time. Monday, next Monday, next video we'll be talking about and showing you guys a little bit of the launch. So if you're excited, uh, if you're looking for some new apparel, athletic apparel, kind of elevated premium small batch uh, next week. I'm excited, I got a lot of work to do. I'm looking around, all the clothes are right here behind the camera. You, you don't get to see, oh, we'll give you a little sneak peek.
Here's a little sneak, sneak peek, one of the teas. The whole idea of this launch is kind of how do you break things down, dumb it down, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. How do we take our branding and still make it clean without just taking a logo and patching it on a shirt? Um, even though at the end of the day, that is what I do. Um, so it's all about kind of our color palette and what we're handling here. But here's one look at one of the basic teas we got coming. It's a little bit more maroony than this we'll be showing you in the camera. Come on, focus up, little buddy. There we go. It's kind of a loose fit, classic fit tee. One of my favorites, real thick. A little bit heavier for the winter. Shit, even in the summer, I like a heavier tee. I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you in the next one.